Nomad Makes. Hi guys and welcome back to the show. I've been really looking forward to making this episode. Today we are going to make a highly accurate DIY MFT without the use of any expensive jigs. So let's not waste any more time and get right down to this. The way I chose to lay out the whole pattern was to use this pattern paper that is used by tailors and dressmakers and such. This 15 meter roll cost me the equivalent of 10 euros, so I have enough for all the MFTs that I'm ever going to make. Now the drawback to using this kind of paper is that the spacing of your holes will be chosen by whatever the spacing of the pattern is. So I'm doing 10 centimeter spacing here. If you are wondering why I chose to use this method, I suggest you check out the proof of concept video I did about this. And I will link that up in the right corner and in the video description. Now, when you're using a paper like this to lay out the holes, as opposed to say a pegboard, you need to stretch it really well so that it stays flat. And I decided to use one corner and the back of the worktop as a reference. This is just to align the holes because the pattern itself is more than accurate enough. And I made sure to anchor the pattern well on all four sides. And before I started marking the position of the holes, I measured the diagonals to make sure the pattern was a square. I actually have a whole video series of the process of making this MFT. And if you're interested, it starts with a failed attempt. Then I do some theory crafting and looking at why it failed and kind of brings us forward. Then there is a proof of concept video. And finally, there is a video where we're trying to figure out how to drill a perfectly plumb, which we need to, to make this table accurate and precise. And finally, of course, there's this video. I'll compile all the videos into a single playlist and put them in a link up here, I think it is. This next step isn't strictly necessary. However, I made a clear mark on each position that I was to drill both because I wanted to plan the layout of the holes and because I wanted to make sure I drilled in the correct locations. And then I just proceeded to mark out the entire table. Nomad makes. It was now time to bring out both my all and Baby Vader to assist me in some real precision work. I am marking each hole with my all to have a point for the tip of the Forstner bit 
to register into. While being as precise as you can with the all, it is far less important than the fact that we are using a precise pattern. I made another video all about this and again you will find a link up in the right corner and in the video description. We are now going to drill the holes. For this I am using my plumb drilling guide. Believe it or not, but this was also a video. Link up in the corner and in the video description. Now I am leaving all of this in to show you how labor intensive the process of using this jig was. And to be perfectly honest it really stretched my patience doing this. If I have one complaint about my method, it is all the setup it takes to use this drill guide. I had to insert the Forstner bit, place the jig precisely, fix it in all four corners, put the shop vac hose in, start the shop vac, fit the drill bit in the chuck, drill forever, change grips for the drill bit to drill deeper, stop the shop vac, open the chuck and remove the drill, unscrew the jig, take the Forstner bit out and cool it every single time for what seemed like a million holes. And Baby Vader just stood there watching and didn't help at all. Oh, and by the way, here is some information about the pattern paper that I used. And a little intermission to check that the holes were actually plumb. The 3D printed bench dogs have a quite tight friction fit, as well as registering flat against the worktop. Now, back to drilling. Giving the Forstner bit a buff, drilling some more, bathing the Forstner bit again, and back to drilling. Oh, by the way, I used water to lubricate the Forstner bit and to keep the hole in the drill guide cool and the grain raised so that the fit was snug. And I brought in Baby Vader to help. One of the things I want to use this MFT for is cross-cutting wide panels. I plan to use three bench dogs 
to reference the panel and the rail against and then print support dogs in the most common plywood thicknesses for the rail to rest on in the front. Since I didn't get enough support from one dog in the front of the rail I decided to drill some more holes while I still had the pattern on the table. Here you can see the final hole pattern. Initially I didn't plan on drilling the three holes you can see on the right, but in the end I decided to, to drill them anyway to give me the opportunity of a wider stance for the workpiece reference. Now I need some more 3D printed bench dogs so we can test this MFT out. Now let's check this thing for accuracy. This is 19mm plywood, so I set the depth of my plunge saw to something like 22mm to get a good cut. And then I cleaned up the edge of the panel. Now, I know that I've worked hard in the preparation for this build, both in the theory crafting behind it and in the amount of concentration and precision needed while building it. But this result surprised even me. Now, as precisely I, as I could read, that was 20.9 millimeters. And this is the other side, and if the camera will ever focus, we will see that it is 20.9 millimeters. This kind of blew my mind, so I did two more test cuts, and they were close to, as close to perfect as I could measure as well. 2 times 14.2 millimeters and 2 times 18.5 So Baby Vader approves the MFT It is a curious thing, but the limiting factor for the accuracy of the MFT is now the plunge saw Here you can see the side-to-side -side slack in the plunge mechanism And because of this I saw no reason to do the 5 cut test You can do it on an MFT though Just to remember that the reference edge 
is in the back not in the front when you turn the test piece and if you want to see a video about the five cut test method I did that in the metric system and you'll find it on my channel uh, and if I remember I'll put it in the video description but again that is it for today guys I really hope you enjoyed the video it was a lot of work this time if you did please remember to leave a thumbs up if this is your first visit to my channel please consider subscribing you'll find a patreon link and affiliate links to products I use and recommend below cheers guys and I'll catch you in the next one